So the liberal perspective for me is the best explanation why this uh, market-based approach has been supported because it's, uh, it allows the vested interest to proclaim there is no need for uh, social property on their activities, economic and institutional strategies. So if you can really prove that market is the best organizing principle for society and there's no need for control, well, uh, of course, you have some kind of support, important support from the big power and, and vested interest. And it was interestingly proposed for uh, what I call the formal validation of the invisible hand. Uh, that was the, the purpose of setting the general equilibrium model to show that there is no need for political intervention. Uh, just, just a parenthesis to, to remind you that Smith, who talked about the invisible hand, had a clear uh, uh, role for morality to be the overall principle and so we could in that sense if we are a moral person we can we can really act without political intervention but with the general equilibrium model and the new assumptions that were proposed well we just no, don't need any any political authority or intervention except for uh, securitizing uh, the property titles and some of the uh, usual public elements uh, the thing is in order to prove the supremacy of the, of the market, a lot of problematic assumptions have been made. Uh, it's both uh, uh, philosophical and, and also methodological elements that to converge to say that, well, any kind of choice, social choice should be explained by, uh, at the individual level. Uh, individuals should have rational, to take rational choices, have exogenous preferences, they have put perfect information on the market, on the signals, that prices that are available. And there is also a perfect competition in the sense that no actors can really change the rule or the, 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 the signals or the price mechanism but its own. Market is, is functioning when there are exchanges of private goods and private goods, as Winston reminded, is based on property titles that are securitized by the legal framework. And there is no externality. Uh, and every uh, element that are out of the market has or should have an internal counterpart in monetary, in monetary terms. So the monetary dimension is used as an internal counterpart of external factors, supposedly uh, incorporated in uh, uh, agent's behavior. And so in that sense, it should be incorporated in market functioning, self-correcting and self-organizing principles and forces. So the monetary dimension, which is a single dimension, is a way to compare different elements and a very key important uh, assumption in uh, marginal theory that you can substitute resources, different type of labor, different kind of goods with one another thanks to their uh, monetary dimension. And it also includes that if we can substitute, we might think that things and processes are reversible. Problematic assumptions and also very deep elements of main limits we can face. The image of man that is proposed uh, doesn't take any account of human psychology, motivation and needs. We have specialists here to, to be able to talk about that. The role of institutions and the interaction between actors and these institutions are not proposed, are not tackled in, in a very simple model or the role of individual diversity, social asymmetries and power dynamics are ignored like it was not possible to have to prove the supremacy of the market if there are all these elements and technology itself is supposed to be something happening sometime, somewhere uh, but there, is, there will be kind of a self-correcting uh, approach to integrate technology. If I, I put some in relation to the human nature co-evolution or interaction, permanent interaction that happens. Uh, I've, been the, I've been doing this uh, work on, on climate change more than 20 years ago, trying to see, well, what does economic, conventional economics tackle with this uh, climate change issues? And I could see that all the complexity of the, of the problem, all the multiple dimension, interaction, complex interaction, synergy, are just not taken into account. The temporalities, the change of uh, for instance, in the geophysical time of the, the fossil fuels creation by, by nature or and compared to the very instant uh, financial transactions, again, is not taken into account. And finally, qualitative changes 
irreversibility and novelty are very difficultly tackled, for instance, by the, by the monetary dimension. You can think of the problem to evaluate the extinction of a, of a species or to take into account a cr clearly novel or new technology in the, in the model. This is something which really uh, poses a lot of problems in the traditional uh, economic uh, uh, approach. And uh, let me insist a little bit on this role of lack of temporality, lack, lack of way to address qualitative changes, because these are the main elements that are common to most of the, uh, of the approach. Uh, it's an atemporal approach, and uh, if I can quote George S. Rogan, who is the father of <laughs> ecological economics, there are several regrettable consequences of the adoption of the mechanistic epistemology by standard economics. The most important is the complete ignorance of the evolutionary nature of the economic process. Um, so, the, I take this as, as, a, as a clue to think, well, maybe the evolutionary approach would be an, an, an alternative way to look at uh, economic theory. And it would be, if you should have a, a way to be a new approach which makes it possible to deal with the dynamic interrelation between economic system and the whole network of physical and social system and indeed the entire composite system of structural relationship. I quote this William Caput, who, who is an institutional, critical institutionalist, in 76, because just to mention that, of course, there has been a lot of talk and, and, and important work being done previously, and so we have to also go <coughs> back to those important uh, scholars. Uh, what is important if we have a really paradigm shift, and you know that with, the, for instance, the geocentric versus the heliocentric representation of the world, that the elements are present, but they are totally different, which the one that are at the, at the periphery becomes central, and the one that are central may become peripheral. So, for instance, the equilibrium is not an issue in itself, but all the processes, all the technology, institution, complexity, interaction should be at the center of the analysis. So it's a real reversal of, of rational with the same type of, of elements, but really this kind of different perspective, really a paradigm shift. And let me just illustrate quickly, the mechanistic paradigm is the me metaphysic of normality, so there are processes, but they are rated in terms of the equilibrium to which it tends or should tend to, 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 to get and not conversely. And the alternative, the uh, evolutionary paradigm, would be a metaphysic of process, creation and transformation of order is always taken to be the deepest of and most fundamental account of the law of, pro of a process. So that would be the kind of general approach. But of course, different evolutionary processes are, may have some commonalities. They take, in, they take part in a temporal uh, succession. They have some bifurcations, that stable phases. But in the same time, they always are realizing in a specific context, so they are context specific. So we have to take into account common elements, specific realizations, and also very important in evolutionary, the emergent property or new properties that can happen when we have, they have synergy between different processes, for instance. Elements that are on the periphery, such as institution, and especially pro property institution and the capitalist mobilization of, of property, and in interaction with the industrial development and the use of fossil fuels may have a kind of energy, uh, synergy together when the capital expansion can finance industrial development and industrial development is able to materialize the pressure for, for um, uh, return, in, income re return, and there is a kind of a circular and cumulative causation that's where you can have a kind of complex capitalist industrial complex that is used or that act as a cultural attractor for, uh, for Western civilization and that expanded to the world level. So focusing on institutions and technology and their interplay, which is the, which is the, the slide that is missing, help understanding the complex that may act as a cultural attractor. So in evolutionary perspective, we can focus on those elements as identifying the key structural forces that are behind the, the, the model of mode of development, but also to think about what could be, oh, this is now the, the so technology institution, the capitalist interplay, uh, and also that it goes to the path dependence and locked-in situation, which is we are more and more uh, 
dependent upon our industrial basis, uh, which explains also what has been called carbon lock-in, but we are also had dependent upon a capitalist mode of governance, and sometimes, and we can see, we will see that with the Paris Agreement, to what extent we are still dependent upon capitalist type of, of, uh, of answers, which is creating new, new markets. So, just a, a word to say that the value of evolutionary economics would also be checked if there is a, a way to envision alternatives, an alternative technological path, alternative institutional modalities, an alternative economic rationale would be important. Technological path in terms of not only production, but self-reproduction, renewable related technology, apprehend the social metabolism, use industrial ecology approach, alternative to Pro private property, state or collective property, different type of ownership which are not based on property title but on rights, duties, obligations, multi-level polycentric governance, all are institutional alternatives that might be proposed. On the last slide, this eco-social rational, this is, we were talking about unity, we might talk about the common ground of having some kind of unity. There is a, this many options and alternative have a substantive rationality for development which put ecological integrity as the first uh, imperative that are for uh, human species uh, survival. Human will being being the, the purpose of economic activity and economic efficiency be as well an important uh, imperative but together they would be a development corridor, economic corridor, whether would be framed by ecological maximal limits, e ecological standards not to be overcome, and existential minima, so minimum for different people uh, talking into account the basic needs of people, and that would frame a, a development corridor in, in a way. Um, so concluding slide, uh, limits of the mechanistic analogy, the need for a new approach and a padding shift which is absolutely crucial. Uh, anchoring this new paradigm on a metaphysic of process, everything is changing, Some, sometimes this change can be stable for a while. Uh, there are commonalities, specific realization of processes, there is two levels, we have to take empirical and, and, and practical, practical and theoretical approach and such, such an alternative can have a potential for diagnosis, all the, 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 the temporary, contemporary development and envisioning alternatives.